Welcome back to our discussion of quantitative methods. We are introducing some of the basic topics related to variables and values. And we, in the previous screencast, just had a conversation about what is mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive when we talk about categories for variables. So let's test ourselves a little bit. First of all, can we explain what is wrong about the following set of values for a variable describing countries of origin of immigrant Americans? Right? That's a lot to soak in, so let's do it again. What is wrong about the following set of values for a variable describing countries of origin of immigrant Americans? Asia, Japan, China, Europe, Italy, Africa, or Brazil? So imagine that this is a question uh, for immigrant Americans on a survey and it's asking them to please tell us what your country of origin is and these are the potential answers let's say they're listed A, B, C, you know Asia, Japan, China and etc. Alright so that that's our scenario let me erase my markings here that's our scenario what do you think the response is? Go ahead and pause if you need a minute to think about it. Okay, you done pausing? Well, the problem is that the values for this variable are a mix of continents and countries, which means they are not mutually exclusive. For example, Japan is in Asia. China is in Asia. Italy is in Europe. Right? Africa is a continent. Brazil is a country. Right? There are lots of problems. So this is not mutually exclusive. How about collectively exhaustive? Do we have a collectively exhaustive categories? Are these all the possible origins of immigrant Americans? Well, the answer is no. <laughs> right? There are many other countries in South America you could be from Argentina. If you're from Argentina and these are the only options available to you for answering this question, what do you check? The closest you could get is Brazil and that's incorrect. So we have some problems with the, these values because they are not mutually exclusive and they are not collectively exhaustive. Let's move on and talk a little bit about ecological fallacies because this is another thing that you will run up against when consuming educational research, specifically in comparative international education, or you might run the risk of creating an ecological fallacy yourself in your own research, so we, we need to understand what it is. And there are a couple of components. One is aggregate data or variables. That's simply data or variables that's based on groupings of individual units. So for example, in the Trends in International Mathematics and Science study, which we also call TIMS. TIMS is a, a data set that is made up of data about individual students. There are math and science assessments, and then there are also background questionnaires for students. And the kinds of data, uh, or the kinds of results that we get from TIMS are often uh, achievement scores, achievement scores, in math and science. And then those achievement scores tend to be aggregated or grouped together and usually represented as average achievement scores by country. So that would be an example of aggregated data. Ecological data or variables is aggregate data based on spatial or geographic units such as city, districts, states, or countries. So back to my example here, average uh, student achievement score by country is an example of ecological data that comes from the aggregate. Now the problem comes when we try to draw conclusions about individuals based on aggregate data. It's, it's essentially a reasoning error. Now let me scale it back a little bit and give a maybe a a more direct example, not one that's countries and, and you know averages at that level, but something maybe a little more specific or a little smaller in scope. 
So suppose that research demonstrates that states with higher proportions of psychiatrists also have higher suicide rates. What conclusion from this relationship would be an ecological fallacy? Research demonstrates that states with higher proportions of psychiatrists have higher suicide rates. What's the ecological fallacy? Pause it for a second if you need to. And if you're done pausing, well, an ecological fallacy would be that people who see psychiatrists commit suicide. You get it? So we've got uh, uh, the aggregate data about higher proportions of psychiatrists. We've got the aggregate data about higher suicide rates among individuals. The ecological fallacy is drawing a causal relationship between these two aggregates, right? People who see psychiatrists commit suicide suggesting that if you go see a psychiatrist, you will then be suicidal. Well, a better way to think about it, if I can get through there. Whoops. <laughs> Jumping the gun. Another example, offer an example of an ecological fallacy concerning the relationship between alcoholism, alcoholism rates and rates of automobile fatalities. Then describe a relationship between these variables that would not be an ecological fallacy. And I already jumped the gun because I showed you this, so we'll just move on. An ecological fallacy derived from that would be that alcoholics are more likely to cause auto fatalities. By the way, perhaps the chances are likely, but drawing the conclusion based on uh, a relationship between alcoholism rates and rates of automobile fatalities is unfortunately an ecological fallacy because it, there's a reasoning error. It would be better to say that states with higher rates of alcoholism also have higher rates of auto fatalities. So you see that just by taking away the causal statement here, we can avoid the ecological fallacy. Okay, so we have a uh, a couple things that we've reviewed in this second part of our quantitative uh, analysis. We've looked at some examples of mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive values for variables. And we've looked at some ways that we can commit reasoning er errors by using both aggregate data and then ecological data to draw incorrect causal relationship statements. So we need to avoid those by understanding what it means to, let me get back to it, <laughs> so many data, ah. what it means to be an aggregate, what it means to be ecological, and then what it means to commit this reasoning error when conclusions about individuals are based on ag aggregate data. Now my challenge to you watching this is to give another example, maybe from international or cross-nationally comparative data, that would be an ecological fallacy. This can, be, this can be something that you have found in the research literature. This could be something that you think up on your own based on your understanding about TIMS or PISA or maybe another international educational assessment like that. Or it could be something that you've seen in a policy document where two relatively um, uh, accurate aggregate or ecological data statements are then put together or conclusions drawn one from the other that aren't really based on appropriate reasoning. Right? I'd be interested in hearing more about what you have found and what ecological fallacies you think might exist in comparative international education research.